So now we want to continue our look at human gastrulation by entitling the next flowchart, Human Gastrulation 2. And before we move any further, I want to sort of ground where we're at. We started off way back when as a fertilized egg. And that turned eventually, because of fertilization, into a zygote. It was a zygote for that reason. That zygote, over six days, underwent cleavage. That's going to be cell division without growth to eventually give us the blastocyst that we mentioned in the previous flowchart and video. That blastocyst moved from the oviduct into the uterus, specifically contacted the uterine lining with the trophoblast cells that are then going to allow for proper implantation. Now it's time to actually do the process of gastrulation upon implantation, after implantation. So notice in the previous video, we actually didn't do anything in terms of gastrulation. We just set up, set the scene up. And that's exactly now the purpose of this now, this next video, this next flowchart, is to look at everything that happens after implantation, after successful blastocyst formation and function um, in the implantation of into the uterus. So after we have the implantation, we can begin gastrulation. So let's look at some uh, a time scale. It's always good to begin with that. Gastrulation takes about one week after implantation. Um, specifically, it's going to be in the broader scheme of things in between the second and third. It's been in between the second and third weeks after fertilization. So fertilization happens. You have about six to seven days of cleavaging, right? You have six to seven days of cell division without um, cell growth. And that's our second week, sort of, that's our first week done, and then we start our second week. And when we start our second week, which is post-implantation, we have time until the third week. That time in between, the second and third week, is one week exactly that's going to be devoted to gastrulation. So let's look at the process. What's actually happening here? Um, what's of focus is the inner cell mass right now. If we look at the inner cell mass, which we remember is what becomes the embryo proper, what becomes the individual, as opposed to the trophoblast, which was just necessary for implantation and successful moving into the uterus. This inner cell mass is going to have a, a very similar structure to something we've seen before. It forms what we would consider a flat disc-like structure, and that flat disc, flat disc will be with two layers. And we've seen these two layers before, and they're coming up again. They will be the epiblast layer and, of course, also the hypoblast layer. So this is not just in chick gastrulation, but in human gastrulation as well. So, of course, be ready to compare the two. The hypoblast layer is the inner layer of this implanted blastocyst, the specifically the inner cell mass portion of that blastocyst. The epiblast is the outer layer. And of particular interest and note is that the epiblast outer layer is almost exclusively going to be or going to become the human embryo as a whole. The human embryo is almost entirely made up of epiblast cells. And we'll see the small exception in just a second. Human embryo almost entirely from these cells, which we'll just abbreviate from this point forward as E. A C epiblast cells. So I'll just say from these cells for right now. Okay, so that's our sort of context of where we're at. We're going to be focusing on an epiblast and a hypoblast during human gastrulation. So the step that I want to look at now is something known as involution. And we've talked about involution before. Involution, if you remember, is when you're moving and folding inwards. And this is going to be specifically in humans of the epiblast cells. So we have involution of epiblast cells as one of our first points of interest or points of talking, let's say, uh, of gastrulation in humans. Again, involution will involve moving inwards, and that's what happens, exactly what happens. You move inwards in an attempt to form something we've seen before again, the primitive streak. So you obviously are wondering, why do I have to learn about chicks and frogs and sea urchins? It's all because it all culminates in the human gastrulation that's worthy of understanding. So it really helps our understanding of human gastrulation when we ground it in the context of other species that have similar mechanisms. So we form this primitive streak as a result of involution of epiblast cells, and now we're going to form some germ layers as a result of this inward movement, because that's always going to result 
result in layer development, when you're moving things in words, when you're folding, when you're invaginating, etc. So what are we going to see? We're going to see that some EC for epiblast cells will form the mesoderm as a result of this primitive streak or from this primitive streak, and some epiblast cells will mix with, and this is why we said almost entirely, will mix with the hypoblast cells, the hypoblast cells to form a different germ layer to form the ectoderm that forms the, uh, or the endoderm, I should say, the endoderm, not the ectoderm. The endoderm will form here. Okay, so we're covered in the mesoderm and the endoderm. Humans, what are we? Triplo or diplo? We're triploblastic, of course. And so now what we just need to sort of finally mention is that we still are missing one layer. Endo, meso, ecto is what's missing, and that comes as a result of this. Whatever is left of the epiblast cells after mesoderm formation, after fusion with hypoblast to form the endoderm, um, that's, those cells will stay on the surface, um, stay on the surface of this growing blastocyst, this developing blastocyst, and thus, because they're staying on the surface, these will, of course, form and forms the ectoderm. And there it is, we have the ecto, we have the endo, and we have the middle layer, the mesoderm. That covers our look at human gastrulation, the specific events that occur after implantation. Um, in the next video, what we're going to be looking at are more specific, uh, even more detailed events that occur as sort of side events as a result of this successful development of three germ layers.